Wow, it's cold today. I got a couple cool ideas for rants from people. The topic of GMO propaganda. That ad, Katie, was beyond horrific. When you study GMOs and how after three generations, the plants don't even produce seed anymore. Yeah, they didn't build two seed vaults uh, on opposite ends of the world because they didn't think GMOs were going to kill everything eventually. They built them because they knew. And then, of course, flatter stuff. The Electric Universe model. Uh -huh. And uh, the Fibonacci sequence, I don't know much about. All I know is that number shows up in almost every pattern in the world. Like in plants, flowers, animals, rock formations, mathematics. As far as the Electric Universe model, that's a pretty easy one. I found out about it recently, but it, it put all the pieces together that I was missing in university. Even when I was taking physics, I was like, gravity can't be anything more. Well, like that one guy says, I can't remember his name, the hippie dude, he makes funny videos. He says, gravity is an anecdotal wet dream of Sir Isaac Newton. And he's right. I mean, it only serves to explain Objects moving through a vacuum on a ball, spinning. Okay, well, our core is made out of metals that, well, or so they claim, our core is made out of nickel and iron, which loses magnetic properties at like, well, a thousand to two thousand degrees, I think. So the core is really what they say it is. Earth would lose its magnetic field and couldn't spin through space. So that alone unwraps the geocentric versus heliocentric argument. They claim the Earth's magnetic field flips polarities every 10 to 100,000 years and it's getting shorter each time. Yeah, um, why don't you just say Santa Claus waved his magic wand and fixed it? <clears throat> the electric universe model is vastly superior for a number of reasons. One, it fits with the Bible, the waters above the waters. The notion of space being a super cool plasma fluid is way more conducive to uh, what we can replicate in the laboratory. Plasma is the most abundant sum substance in the universe after all. And I mean the Big Bang, as Dr. Ken Hoven would say, what do you want me to believe? That uranium and heavy metals evolved from hydrogen? No. They still can't even figure out how a star could be born. The electric universe model also runs on the principle that the superior force is the electromagnetic field. You collapse the electromagnetic field, like what they're trying to do with CERN, and all matter would be reduced to atoms. Less than atoms. The electromagnetic field is everything. Gravity, like I said, so if, if Earth isn't moving, and we can prove it, then gravity is just a buzzword to describe objects being sucked to a ball. Okay, how about all the clouds? Millions of pounds of cloud vapor somehow hover there? Bees? If gravity was what they say it was, bees wouldn't be able to fly. I don't even think we'd be able to move. No. Objects fall because they have mass. They're heavier than the air around us. You don't need this gravity theory to explain anything, especially going under the assumption that stuff like the michelson morley experiment proves Earth's not moving. Sorry, that laser would have been disrupted if this place was moving, and it wasn't. And you can replicate that experiment over and over. But like I said, when I was in university, I always knew something was wrong with the Big Bang. I mean, I liked physics. I liked how, how a particle wave physics works. I mean, when you look into uh, some metaphysics, you realize that consciousness seems to create matter. Or the definition of what is matter. Matter in a superposition. It's all empty space on a subatomic level. You get in there and you look at the 
the, the individual atoms. And really, it's empty space. And then on a subatomic level, it's just quarks. Um, so when you're thinking like everything from cars to tissue to water to air on a subatomic level is made of the same stuff, well, the word God's hologram comes to mind. <laughs> And black holes only exist on paper as tears in space-time. They read that off the large interferometers, I think there's three of them, one in Vatican City and two in America somewhere, and they read their interferometer telescopes and they get pings of what they would consider wave distortion or wave retardation. Now, their observations are correct, but their conclusions are insane. So they conclude by that, that this wave retardation is a tear in space-time. Well, maybe it's just supercharged clouds of plasma, oppositely charged, slamming into each other at a medium pace. I've arrived. So I'm sitting here wigging out over the fact that there's proof that disproves Big Bang and Einstein and yet it's almost not even heard of. I want these two books. Because the globe is a lie. Oh, some light reading over there. I know Hans Elfine was the father of plasma physics, but he wasn't necessarily, a lot of these scientists who study the electric universe model and or James Clerk Maxwell, Oliver Heaviside, Oleg D. Polachenko, they can all debunk Einstein's work, but I don't think any of them had the geocentric model in mind, which is funny. Tesla did. Um, but again, you're working from a poison tree that is special relativity and or Newtonian physics, and to say Newtonian physics is wrong is sacrosanct to go against the laws of the scientism god which isn't the real god uh, the electric universe model uh, would be better explained by guys like wallace thornhill yeah wallace thornhill he's the man when it comes to the electric universe model and the mainstream hates him for it because he he tells it like it is. Newtonian physics is a load of sh crap. I mean, uh, when you're studying electromagnetic fields, I think James Clerk Maxwell is the leading expert. I mean, we're talking about a guy who, who managed to come up with the formula for God's let there be light. Most physicists avoid his stuff because, myself included, I'm just a dropout, remember? I can't even come close to doing his equations. And even physicists today like Neil Disgrace Tyson and Bill Lye, or Bill Nye, the liar guy, they were C students at best. If I can't do Buddy's equations, I'm pretty sure they can't. They sure are pretty good actors though, aren't they? Pear-shaped. I think his brain is pear-shaped. I like Tesla's idea about the Earth. He always said it, it wasn't an object, therefore it has no edge. It's a realm. And the electromagnetic ether, A-E-T-H-E-R, ether, which today we could call plasma field theory, better supports uh, our world. As fr I, I, I mean, I don't feel like I've been moving at the speed of light the last zipping through the galaxy, whatever. It just doesn't make any sense. Newtonian physics is the biggest blunder of modern science, of all science. No, I suggest everybody look into the work of Wallace Thornhill. I don't know if he has any understanding of the modern geocentric versus heliocentric argument but I pray he looks into it because you can't just throw away the Michelson-Morley experiment even the guys in that film The Principle 
talking about how all energy emanates away from Earth. Well, that proves that Earth's the center of the creation. If you don't have energy emanating to us or in any other way, that something like all energy is emanating away from us. I've yet to see that film. I gotta look into that experiment more, but uh, I know the Michelson Morley one. All of physics collapses under the weight of that experiment. Not to mention pendulum shifts. If the Earth was moving, there shouldn't be a stationary pendulum anywhere on, on, the, on Earth. And yet, any time a pendulum experiment is done, they have to start it up. <laughs> How did that one guy call it? Lateral bias? <laughs> the whole going up into space thing is another. I mean, Bill Cooper said it best when he said we can't get above 400 miles because of the Van Allen belt. And they ran out of pre-filmed episodes that Stanley Kubrick did for the fake moon landing. They couldn't go on with it. The lie was just too big. Like that uh, ODD TV lyric, you know? NASA's, mi NASA's missions to the moon were never completed. They just filmed them in a room and people believed it. In fact, uh, that Chinese filmed fake moon landing they never aired it because it was so clearly fake. If you can get your hands on that, watch that. Just Google fake Chinese moon landing never aired or something like that. For me even, I remember thinking as a kid, the moon is supposedly 250,000 miles away and the sun millions, and yet they're the exact same size in the sky. That's a huge red flag right then and there. I mean, the Bible describes them as two lamps. And then you got the moon giving off cold light. Cold light. And that's a replicatable experiment. Full moonlight, steady wind, put a, a saucer plate in the moon shade, a saucer plate in the moonlight, use a laser temperature pointer. The direct moonlight is gonna be six to 12 degrees colder. We got ourselves a cold moon giving off cold light. Explain that, Neil Disgrace Tyson. The Electric Universe model also better defines what we would call the solar system. I mean, if an electromagnetic field supports all the bodies, spinning them in an, in an ancient clockwork, I would explain why Polaris never moves and all the other stars seemingly go around it. Yeah, if we're on a ball spinning through space at ridiculous speeds, why have the stars not completely changed? And they'll say it's because everything's moving in parallel, <laughs> which violates the laws of angular momentum, that we got galaxies and stuff spinning in wrong directions and all over the place. Yeah, the Big Bang was only invented in 1931, remember? I got family photos older than that. Plus, I mean, even not even... Well, when you think of uh, the flat Earth model, I guess that would put, instead of the sun being 93 million miles away, it's about three to 4,000 miles up and 30 to 40 miles wide. But when you got photos and video of the sun in the clouds and clouds behind and in front foreground and rear ground that's proof that the sun's in the clouds you know so i see people i've shown the footage to people and i can just see the fluoride stairs and they just don't want to go there they, they they start coming up with some reason why you would see that or some excuse as to how what, the clouds are 93 million miles away too? <clears throat> yeah, I think us flat earthers have figured something out. We're ahead by a century. 
We're ahead by a century, and Stephen Hawking's is very wrong. Timmy. Timmy! Timmers! So another thing about, yeah, as I said before, gravity is nothing more than a byproduct of electromagnetism. It's a nice word to describe that if I drop my phone right now, it's gonna hit the ground and break. Was that gravity? No. It's because it's heavier than the air. To quote that one guy from that other video. That's the thing about Einstein. In all his attempts to unify the field theories, and he admitted, he, <laughs> he, he said something like, uh, if your facts don't fit, change them. He admitted to flubbing the results. I've also heard that it, he considered it his greatest failure and that uh, he knew he should have never discounted the Michelson-Morley experiment or the ether, which today you would call pl plasma field theory or the electric universe model in my opinion. The ether is just a very old word to describe it. He also admitted that he has yet to find a way to measure curve. Well, curvature model doesn't really have anything to do with the electric universe model. That's the Pythagorean theorem. Eight inches of curve per mile squared, which is another point altogether. Either NASA's lying and Earth is a hundred times bigger than it is, or it ain't no damn ball. The Van Allen belt's another one. They say it's radiation and stuff, but it could be an electromagnetic bubble we can't get out of. What the scriptures would call the dome or whatever. As far as the notion of satellites and stuff, I think that we could get unmanned things up there, hover around, drones and stuff that don't even need to come down. Unless they're military, it's like bingo for fuel and ammo, RTB. But I mean, if they're not reloading munitions, they can stay up there indefinitely. As far as the ISS, I mean, it's 2,000 degrees up there, they say. And that bitch is spinning around, and all the aluminum on it doesn't melt. It's 610, I think. And the steel, steel doesn't melt to like 24 or 27. But uh, it would still bake like an oven. And last time I checked, Freemason astronaut or not, humans bake at 100. The ISS space station violates the first and second laws of thermodynamics. Yeah, Einstein didn't uh, unify nothing. In fact, I heard he stole the theories from Ponway and his wife. Something like that, I think the name, his name is Ponway. Can't remember. Einstein was a fraud though. Yeah, and like ODD TV said in that one video, the geocentric versus heliocentric argument, it never really died off, it just died down. NASA is what really pooched the deal. Yeah, NASA, Operation Paperclip. A bunch of Nazis. Von Braun even said many times, publicly, including supposedly, according to my unproven sources, my father, that he said it to Grandpa even, that the last card they play is the fake alien invasion, and the first card is faking space. Well, if anyone's gonna know about it, it's all those 33rd level Sith Lords like my grandpa. So NASA comes into the picture and you would have to be crazy on LSD to just accept every photo they give you as sacrosanct. It's, it's so easy to fake that stuff. I mean, Rob Skiba proved it in his videos and so did ODD TV with simple off the shelf software. Anyone can fake this. And NASA's budget this year alone was something like 52 million a day. 
Jesus, save us. They're using that money, in my opinion, to build the infrastructure they need for the fake alien invasion. If giant city-sized ships start hovering over med major metropolitan areas, well, then I'll know for sure where all that money went.